tools. We should talk about the Sapien framework for a second because yeah. I think people get so wrapped up in a diet that works for them and they don't realize that maybe that's just a tool. The carnivore diet, to me, is a tool. Right. It's like if you want to reverse your autoimmune conditions, yeah. use the carnivore diet. You if you have some serious food intolerances and, you know, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Or some medical issues that they can't figure yes, out. Yeah, use that. But why people like make it their identity? It's Similarly, crazy. the keto diet, like this exactly. keto fad diet, it's a great tool, but it's not everyone's solution. Use it if you need it, but just know that it's a tool. I don't get why people make their their identities around it or think it's the only way to do it or just want to do it every second of the day. And then they evangelize it to everyone like it's the, like the newest, most amazing thing. It's like – That's a cultural thing. It's because people personalize their food intake so much that so they – It's so personal. Like when you bring up – uh, food yeah, or great, even great restrictions, point. right? The Mind, body, and spirits. All right, we're back. Episode two. Today we're with the whole Sapien team. We have Dr. Gary Schliffer and Yaniv Fatucci. Yaniv is the producer of Food Lies and the owner of Attack Media, a production company here in Los Angeles. And Dr. Gary is the owner of Evolve Healthcare. And they're both awesome. They're both my business partners and they're both here today to talk about all things sapien and the lifestyle and beyond food and the mind, the body, the spirit, to use that cliche term. So let's get to it. Please subscribe on iTunes. Please subscribe on YouTube. This is a new show. We need people to help get it off the ground. It'd be super helpful to go onto your podcast app, especially the Apple one or iTunes, and give us a rating and a review. That helps get us more visibility. Tell family and friends. Support us on Patreon. It's under Peak Human, my other podcast, patreon.com slash peak human. You can also help out the film Food Lies at foodlies.org you can click through to the indiegogo where you can get a pre-order copy you can get all the grass finished meat at nose to tail.org which we will bring up awesome grass finished meat raised in texas and delivered to your door that's all let's get to it thanks for listening everyone all right everyone we're back for hey. episode two well, hey. we yeah. got yaniv here look who's here everyone who That's a goofy to? looking guy. Like, hey, right. come uh-huh. on. No, you're beautiful. This moneymaker uh, is going to bring you all the views. Come hey, on. Hey, guys. It's no Cheers. Christy, but all right. That's so true. To the second right. champion show. All right, let's do it. So, mm. Mm. hang on. All right, so we're here. This is the whole team. We are starting a company together. We're doing Food Lies. This is a producer of Food Lies. This is the doctor behind Food Lies and the clinical practice that we're in. And this is how... I think I'm learning a lot more by being in this clinic. We're at Evolve Healthcare in Woodland Hills. And yes, this is Dr. Gary. We got introduced to him the first show. You can say. So, yeah, I'm Dr. Gary Schliffer. I'm an internal medicine doctor. I'm passionate about nutrition, metabolism, um, medicines, and drugs, and just general wellness and health. Uh, I'm really excited to do this podcast, you guys. You always are. It's been a dream of mine. Look, I'm a talker. Ah, <laughs> tell you me guys, about it. And, and I'm really passionate about sharing uh, the new information that I've learned. And, and I'll tell you, I've learned so much from these two guys over the last three years. Uh, since I got out of my training, we've been working together and building uh, this company. And, and I've been building my practice here at Evolve Healthcare. And man, am I excited to share with everyone all the stuff we've learned about food, exercise, human optimization, I mean, there's so much to talk about. So uh, I'm happy to have he- Yaniv here today. Yeah, Introduce thanks for having me, guys. Oh, yeah, Look at that smile, everyone. Mm. Okay. All Honestly, right. You All see right. the views going up right now. <laughs> so honestly, I, I, I'm almost coming at this as kind of like a regular Joe l- layman's perspective because I obviously am not in the medical field, but being close with these two guys, I've been privy to a lot of the new information, new science, and then joining up on this, fo- on this film, Food Lies, I've done some deep diving into nutrition and having some changes applied in my own life. I, I've just been inspired to to jump into the podcast as well so thanks for having me um i think what i bring to the table in terms of uh just as another voice here is uh just really coming coming into it as a uh 
as a complete outsider and learning as I go. So I'm, I'm definitely not, uh, you, you, there was an article that would pop up and I bring it to them for their two cents. Um, and that's always added an additional context. Uh, you know, it goes beyond just looking at the comments and reading podcasts. Um, it's really it's really helpful to speak to a real doctor, uh, a real health coach, real real uh, people applying food this scientist. info. Yes, food scientist. I, I do like that, by he, the way. That's what he is. All right, Look, I'll take it. I don't know many people that know more about food science I, and biochemistry it's true. related to food than Brian. Like, I honestly. probably you probably can't name too many nutritionists that make as many graphs as he does. <laughs> so I, well, that's, I'm trying to put it to practice. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm great because people understand it. I love it, and, and your your perspective on it is is very like practical, which is what I really appreciate. Yeah. It, it it boils it down to a really like digestible level for me. That's a good pun. Oh, that was like a really that. good pun. Digest. Let's look, make a note of that. Look, I I do want to emphasize this in the beginning of the show, and something we talked about in episode one is like there's a lot of information out there, mm. and it's really hard to decipher. And once you do decipher it, it's hard to apply it. It's hard to make changes when it comes to food. And lifestyle and I our goal with this podcast with with our company is to create meaningful actionable yeah. practical ideas and recommendations right. and I think that as a team I, I, that's where I think our strength is is like the three of us together can give people a real useful mm. approach to this stuff not an ideological one or one that's very married to like one concept but sure. really a more well-rounded general approach to and it. not too deep in the weeds like yeah. Rhonda Patrick's great she goes on Joe Rogan a lot but she's like looking at these studies and tiny little mechanisms and like yeah. wait you gotta step back a little and just give it to people the way they can understand it and yeah. and think about the big picture we're thinking about it from an ancestral perspective yeah. and I don't think she does that she's right. so like into this small world yeah. and like, all right, you need to just take a step back. Well, it's true. We, we live in a culture of like over information, like forget misinformation, which we know that's that's clearly been the path yeah. the last 60 years, but now it's over information. So when you have a lot of personalities coming out saying, here's new information, look at this. It's a lot of people. It's like a tug of war. People are yeah. people are like, uh, you know, pulling for your attention. Um, so I appreciate being involved, obviously, yeah. and learning it uh, firsthand with you guys and the passion that comes with it, because you obviously get heated on this discussion so coming from from a place where forget misinformation lack of information right like not even uh more than 12 hours spent on attrition in your medical studies and then obviously brian with his personal story so i love that you guys uh, have a lot of passion behind this stuff yeah and that's why we're doing it in the the healthcare facility we could do it at his studio right but it's like this is gary's fired up he's just seeing patients all day and we want to bring that energy into this show i look I love, first of all, I love Rhonda Patrick and what she brings. And I love a lot of the scientists that are in the community right now sharing, you know, the new research and, and really getting into the weeds. But I think what we're really missing is sort of the marriage of the science and the and the, the weeds, if you will, and, and the clinical approach. Mm -hmm. And I know on Brian's podcast, uh, Peak Human Podcast, which is amazing, he's had everyone from scientists to practicing clinicians like Dr. Tro and Dr. Diamond. Mm -hmm. And these are, everyone gives this unique perspective, right? And when I'm now going through like all the episodes, I'm getting this really broad perspective of what's going on in the world of nutrition and food and sort of like the mis misunderstandings. And I think our goal is really to, to deliver those ideas in a digestible, palatable way. Because honestly, it, it, for those of you who haven't heard it, Peak Human is really intense. It's a curriculum. Yeah. It is a scientific curriculum in and history in yeah. food and food and, and, and new science. And so, yeah, I, I think it's great to have you di meeting with all these people and digesting all this information. And then we sit around and eat meat <laughs> and like figure out how to share these ideas with people. So I, I think going forward... The shows are going to be really focused on that and, and all our contests, including Food Lines, right? For sure. And and then also what you bring to the table, I feel like you have this sort of more spiritual side. Oh, right? Huge. Yeah, I mean, and that's something that's developed almost like as Tell a us parallel. About that. Tell us about that. Uh, spiritually speaking, I don't know. It's hard to call it. That, that word is so like you know, convoluted now, but I, I definitely uh, come from a sort of um, experimental background where I never really associated myself with one, you know, ideology or um, like a lot of this uh, sort of new age outlook uh, that you can see coming uh, from different people. But it's not it's not really like boiled down to the word spirit, although 
you know, that is, I guess, the word that we use for something we can't describe. Um, yeah. and, and to me, you know, it, that perspective is in line with, with, uh, with, with the gut, you know, with, with what we're, we're putting into our bodies. It's, it's, uh, it's at the end of the day, part of our DNA and, and, and boils down to what we're able to put out. So, um, I really think that, you know, and from what I've learned, you know, that your stomach is your second brain and oh, yeah. having its own nervous system can really change the way you live your life, not just on a physical level, but, but yeah, on a mental and spiritual Emotional, as well. Yeah. And well, mind, body, spirit. I mean, that's part of the sapien show. It's like, it's mind, body, spirit. It's like, you know, food lies and peak human. It's like, we're just talking nutrition, and, yeah. you know, fitness and nutrition, but it's like, we're trying to wrap it up into a bigger picture here. It just so happens to be at the exact same time that we have this food renaissance we're also experiencing a psychedelic renaissance and i think it's very obvious that the two are intertwined and as michael pollan really uh he puts it out there really well uh, having been a, a food author yeah, a and now speaking yeah. on psychedelics yeah. mm -hmm. it's almost like psychedelics and drugs in general are just another food just another item that you're putting into your body and it affects your your physiology or your your psyche and um i, I love that tying that parallel of food and drugs has done a lot for my ethos on both and it makes a lot of sense yeah and look something you guys will notice is we're going to talk about a lot of authors a lot of books a lot of podcasts a lot of scientists and researchers and i think one of our goals is to really share these brilliant minds with more people because it's hard. It's hard to find the right information. And um, I think I, that's something we're going to try to do. We're that's gonna, what I try to do. Yeah. I try to like synthesize things or yeah. like make, yeah. digest them and get get them out to people. That's why I make these graphs. I'm obsessed with these graphs because it's amazing the, graphs. The biggest, <laughs> the, like the ultimate synthesizing is putting something that I've talked to 100 people now, I think, in the nutrition space, and I'm trying to get their concepts into one picture. Yeah, for those of you who haven't seen Brian's graphs at food.lies, he has, and this will be in the movie, it's but Instagram. he has Instagram. What did I say? Okay, no, no, Instagram, but, but just a ton of super useful, super relevant novel graphs and charts that helps explain a lot of the misunderstandings we have in the food world. Right. I literally in my clinical practice, pull out my phone on a regular basis, pull right. out my phone to that Instagram and we'll <laughs> use certain graphs. And you would be surprised how you could see the light turn on in people's eyes. Yeah. Your chart with the snacks and the frequency of eating carbs. Processing. Uh, the processing yeah. graph, the sort of the sapien framework with all the diets and how they work together. I mean, these are really powerful like imagery. You know, they say a picture uh, is a thousand words like that that's what these graphs are so so as we're talking about it uh, and we make references to it we'll try to include it in show notes and footnotes but really it's all there on his instagram and uh i really encourage you guys to look at it kind of while you're listening and kind of try to synthesize it along with us as we're talking about it all right enough about my grass <laughs> <laughs> we should so we were gonna do this show. We're gonna have like a format where we start with a story. Sure. Right. So. So we won't be ranting like this every time. Yeah. <laughs> this because we're excited. Yeah. But yeah, it's true. I think I think stories help uh, shape a conversation very well, and you know we we are humanizing our experiences uh, in terms of the science and and applying it to the day to day. So the fact that we can can start an episode off with a with a real life story from the recent week uh i think will help you guys don't either of you watch game of thrones do you I, dude don't shame us <laughs> like this on the internet but oh, yeah you do, you do. oh you do damn it so, I'm the only one. One. so spoiler alert right. like last yeah, episode yeah they make it clear the one of the most powerful things in this world are stories oh my god more powerful of than course. kings and yeah. presidents yeah, and yeah. Live on. The stories live on stories live on yeah. people believe in stories what we'll you'll hear us talk about like stories about meat yeah. and vegetables and stories about fat right and and stories about exercise and and these are all stories that have in many times hurt us right like stories that send the wrong message that have been fabricated yeah and then there's stories that really send a message that's positive message yeah. so I think that's that, that's something that Yaniv, you you've really brought to my attention yeah with your passion for filmmaking and producing shows and Brian's all full of stories. So <laughs> it's also related to Yuval Harari and Sapiens. Yes, oh, absolutely. Sapiens. So he the mentions it. Sapiens. So well, he mentions today, it in the book. Yeah, it came up today in my clinical practice. I was talking to a thirty-year-old healthy guy who's a healthcare professional, and I started sharing our Sapien diet with him. 
he had a million questions. It was so fun because he had like all these kind of deep dive questions. Sure. And he looks at me and he's like, wait, this a, have you read Sapiens? Uh, and then we were like, you know, so, oh, yeah. so look, there's this book called Sapiens, the story of us by this brilliant uh, professor from Israel named Yuval Harari. And all three of us read the book. It's incredibly inspirational to us. We obviously named our company after it. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of, but yeah. (laughs) And uh, if you you are looking for a book to read, this is the most powerful. my number one book. Number one. Number one of my life. I'm ordering a bunch of copies to sell in my office. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's that. It's that, guys. So what's our story? So our story, uh, well, we just, Gary and I just got back from Alabama. We went to a, a music festival out there. Uh, it's our, Gary's fourth time in a, in a row, I'm a I believe. I'm a music fan, you guys. Yeah. I love to see all forms of live music. And, and, and to me, it's always I been a part of my here. life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you went to hang out. So yeah. it's Hangout Music Festival. It's in Gulf Shores, Alabama. We just got back a few days ago. And just to boil it down, I mean, as it's been in my experience, Music festivals typically are, are not just a display of good music, but also good looking people, right? Like healthy young people out there in the sun enjoying live music. And I have this like fixated image over all different festivals that I've been to where you you show out, you know, you're you're on the beach and, and you're living your best life. But in Alabama this time around, I think with a different perspective and, and some new information, it just looked different. And let me give everyone like a little bit of a a frame of reference. Hangout Music Festival is unlike any other festival sure. I've ever seen. This is two huge, beautiful stages on the beach, right in front of the water. In the sand. In You're, the sand. Yeah, yeah, you can sit in the sand and lie down and watch the music. You could be music. swimming in the ocean and watching the main yeah, act on stage. Yeah, really yeah. So your toes in the sand the whole weekend. So everyone's in bikinis, everyone's in beach, summer right. vibes. And boy, were we blown away when we saw and I don't know how to put this, but just the majority of young people, people in their teens and 20s that are just completely out of shape. Right. And like, not just a little bit. But you know what's funny? Like when you say out of shape now, I have a different definition of that. Because I think if it, without the last year or two of, of learning the ways of, of proper nutrition and and, uh, and self-care and self-care. You know, movement and sleep and sun, sun exposure, it's like, what might look like just an average person, it is actually sick. You know, you can see it. You can see the 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 sort of like skin quality and the skin laxity. Skin laxity, yes. Yeah, and you can see a people are droopy when they shouldn't be droopy because they don't move. Right. And Alabama is is I would argue a, a pretty good sample of of uh, of the majority of America, right? It's well, people it's centered. come from all over. Too. Right. It's not like this music yeah. festival is only Alabama. No, right. no, no, no. Yeah, it's 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 almost like the Coachella of the South. A lot of people yeah. from uh, Florida and uh, Midwest, Indianapolis will show up. So you get a sampling of of a little bit of everybody from you know most of America, Middle America, especially. So, I got to stop. So for one thing, this is not a fat shaming thing. We're not talking about fat shaming. I'm not even talking about fat. That's what, that's what I'm getting at. It's like, we're talking, well, we're just, we're talking about the the state of our country. Yes. We're in a problem. We're not, we're not making fun of fat people here. Right. So now, add to that the fact that Alabama has been in the news all last couple of weeks over the abortion ban, which is a whole other topic that is not relevant to us, but mm-hmm. obviously uh, sort of disgusting in its own right. Yeah. It's, it's, it was just shocking to be at a music festival where you expect one thing and get something else. And I think that realization is only, at least for me, coming now. Like a year or two ago, I would have not noticed. Yeah, I think the other part of this is years past, because I've been a few years, there's been a, it's been skewed a little bit like more um, diverse age group, right? So you just see people of all ages. Uh, and I'm in my mid 30s. And so when I started going, I was early 30s and and I saw people of all ages and I, you know, people are heavy. People are all sorts of different parts in their life. And and I didn't notice it as much. This year, it was very skewed young. It was a lot of young people. Like you could just notice it. it, Mm. Everyone was in their late teens, early 20s um, for whatever reason. But the sheer volume, not like it's not that they're fat. It's that they look pre-diabetic to me. Right. Mm. They look like they're on their way to metabolic syndrome or deep in metabolic syndrome. It's not about being fat. It's about having a dysregulated and broken metabolism, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and of so- course, we're generalizing. But what we're getting, this is just to hit on the point of 
it's not what it it's an epidemic it's, it's also yeah. just an epidemic it's it's not just a handful of people it's everyone yeah mm. a- and you can see people struggling with their exertion people right. that should be super fit yeah because we should we're animals we should be fit especially when you're in your 20s yeah like you should be in shape you sh- your skin shouldn't be drooping off of your body right. like that's not normal or natural but when you don't move when you don't exercise when you eat shit sorry but it's shit your body decompensates right. and it does so at an earlier and earlier age. And we're seeing epidemic of childhood obesity, childhood diabetes. I mean, you can see it. It's palpable in the air. And, and it was honestly, it was frightening for me. The reason it's noteworthy for a music festival is because a festival like that has been a sign of youthfulness. A of, self-selected uh, group of healthy people. There right? you go. Yeah. Fit, fit young people who are out in the sun and capable of going from one stage to the other and standing on their feet for 12 hours a day. And that's just not the case not right the case. now. It's people who are struggling. And it was crazy to, to not have noticed it last year, but but did notice it this year. You know what I mean? I think that's the paradigm that has shifted for me internally is I have a new standard of what health means on the outside. And to go to your uh, practice, like what you're doing here at Evolve, not just being healthcare, but also being beauty. And and I'm starting to align this sense that beauty is health. Like not not to like, not not to uh, preach on any aesthetics or anything like that, but, but the idea that, that if you look good, you feel good, and if you feel good, you probably will look good, and and it, that that sort of combination mm. is key. Yeah. Well, you know what stands out to me is the new normal. This is a yeah. new normal, Nailed but it. like, th- okay, this is my big thing is just because we eat, so people eat cereal today because it exists. Just because McDonald's exists today, right. all these things exist, and it's normal. That doesn't mean it's right. Right. So that's the problem with normalizing this size of people or normalizing this way of eating. You feel like you're doing something wrong if you're not participating in this, right? And so that's why it's so hard to work against people. So I, I'm in the social media world. People, I'm getting all these stories from all angles, and I see people naysayers, and they're like, "You're crazy. You don't eat carbs. Like, why are you restricting yourself? Why are you denying yourself these carbs?" It's like, why should I eat carbs? Yes, I understand they're delicious. So should I just eat donuts every single day? Should I just drink soda all day? Like, no one does that really so i, I get hear you i, I get that it's you. good i but, hear it all the time too but it's like I, I there's there's no benefit to eating carbs other than just pure enjo- flavor well i think so many people are used to gaining so much pleasure from food and i wonder if part of it is that the rest of our lives are a little bit depleted of pleasure you know we poo pooed sexuality for decades right. too and people are still trying to figure out how to have healthy sexual relationships people are no longer physically active so they're losing those endorphins and and natural rush of hormones that make them happy mm-hmm. like we'll talk about it in a minute but best way to treat depression is eat right and exercise right. drugs are not the first line therapy right. you know and people have basically been trained to use food as a drug to feel better instead of social interactions right uh, interpersonal communication yeah physical exertion like sun exposure they just sit at home play video games and wonder why they're sad you know it's valid to to connect food to mental health and we right with the with obviously the gut biome having a nervous system but specifically in america when you see a dependency on sugar being the basis of that food pyramid you can tell that 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 we were set for a a, a downward path of of mental yeah. health from the beginning and that's another thing is america right when we started this kind of project we discovered that there's other people in other countries that are talking about this right uh, Pete Evans, mm-hmm. great guy, right. made, wrote, uh, made this mo- movie, The Magic Pill, on Netflix, super inspirational for us, really drove us to kind of move forward here. He's a great guy. He has another show called The Paleo Way, excellent show. And it's like, there's a, there's content out there, but it's not American content. It's true. And America seems to be really reluctant to uh, break its, its dependency on carbohydrates and sugar. Why? Do you think it's the industrial dependency or the infrastructure? Like why? Is like the you, food companies? Is it what is it, Brian? It's all. Tell us, like, it, Brian. Tell us. Well, Give us the answers. 
I think Americans. <laughs> uh, well, I, I haven't thought about this much. You're putting me on the spot here, but it's, I think it's, it's definitely part of the the whole system we have going, and the, yeah, these big industries and the advertising and all that. But I think maybe it's just to do with Americans. They just want to indulge themselves at all times. I think it's part of our culture. Is like I want to get what I want. I'm an American. I'm entitled. Immediate, 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 immediate gratification, yeah, yeah. and there, and, and it's. Just, yeah, and it's just normal. Also, it yeah, compounds I mean, on itself. So then when you look around and everyone else is doing it, then you're like, oh, of course I'm going to do it. So it's like the culture just made this momentum. But then in other cultures, they don't have this momentum where in a Japanese culture or like in a Scandinavian culture, right. they're eating way different foods and more whole foods and from their family farm. And that's normal. And that that momentum stayed with them. And right. so they never got fat and they don't have this idea of I need to eat donuts right. all the time. You know, and for me, I poo-poo, and I do this a lot in my practice, is I poo-poo food companies. I do think that, I don't know that it's a conspiracy, but I think the capitalistic machine that makes money on food in America is very powerful. Sure. And I think that, you know, we'll talk about it or you could read about it, but the story of Kellogg and cereal and how they ingrained themselves, no pun intended, mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, Nutritious and, part of your breakfast. Yeah, like oh, these con okay. we have these concepts of like breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Bullshit. You know, you got to eat five meals a day and you got to have snacks because sure. you're going to be hypoglycemic. Bullshit. Right. You know, Greens. orange juice is good for you. Bullshit. You eat carbs for energy. <laughs> carbs for energy. Heart healthy grains. Made up term. By the food companies, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I don't want to be here like a conspiracy theorist, but... I do think that the food industry has to take some responsibility here, you know, and, and just going from animal fats to fake hydrogenated fats, realizing those are poisonous, then going to vegetable oils. And now we're stuck with vegetable oils that we know are bad for us and we don't have nowhere to go. Whose fault is that? I mean, yeah. someone needs to take responsibility for that. And, and honestly, I, I, I think the food company should step their game up and follow the path of companies like Primal Kitchen, who yeah. just got bought out by, I believe it's Heinz, Kraft Heinz. Like, great, let's start making mayonnaise with real products, with, with real oils. Let's start making real food. And and it's happening, but it's it's slow and it's not enough. And I we need to press that gas a little yeah. bit. That's why you gotta commend the movement leaders, people like Nina Teichels, who's taken this Is all the way up. Teichels? 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 Nina Teichels from, from a big fat surprise. Mark Sisson. Yeah. But but Nina specifically, who's making the case that maybe 10, 20 years from now, the American public has a class action lawsuit against the government for making us fat. And I think that that is valid, although we can also argue that this was misguided rather than like maliciously right, guided and sure, that's what i mean sure. yeah and i think this is an important part of the film that we're de that we're developing is that you know we, we're looking at misinformation and we're pointing fingers but really we can point it, we can point them on ourselves we 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 were you know misinformed from the get-go but it was i don't think that it was um the, indu like the industry like malicious right? yeah right. It, i think it was truly some bad research early on right yeah um, absolutely and look, and there's also like an American, this American, you guys made me think about this, this American desire for immediacy or like a simple solution is a little bit part of the problem. It's like, it's like the carnivore movement. Yeah. I, they have a lot of great ideas, but it's not that simple. And it's a bit extreme. It's not, well, it's just not like one side. Oh, just eat me. Problem solved. It's not that simple. It's not, there's no one sentence to solve this problem. Just like there's not one conspiracy or one food company or one story that's going to explain it all. It's a big, complicated right. mess. And we need to slowly change the story about nutrition and food. It's also person to person. So what, while the carnivore diet can certainly be a solution for many people and, and, and can be an incredible weight loss factor and can push people towards true health, it's also a person to person thing. You have yeah. to look at the genetics and you have to like understand people's uh, lifestyles and, and know Their if it's backgrounds. Yeah. Um, well, I think they're tools. We should talk about the sapien framework for a second, because yeah. I think people get so wrapped up in a diet that works for them and they don't realize that maybe that's just a tool. The carnivore diet to me is a tool. Right. It's like, if you want to reverse your autoimmune conditions, yeah. use the carnivore diet. You if you have some serious food intolerances and you know, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Or some medical issues that they can't figure yes, out. Yeah, use that. Yeah. But why people like make it their identity. It's Similarly, crazy. the keto diet, like this exactly. keto fad diet, it's a great tool. 
but it's not everyone's solution. Use it if you need it, but just know that as a tool. I don't get why people make their their identities around it or think it's the only way to do it or just want to do it every second of every day. And then day. they evangelize it to everyone like it's the like the newest, most amazing thing. It's like that's a cultural thing. It's because people personalize their food intake so much that so they personal. it's so personal. Like when you bring up uh, food That's or good. even good restrictions, point. right? Like people get so personal and wound up about it that, that of course they'll evangelize it if it works for them. Like of vegan. course they, they yeah. well, it's, it's really community. It's community. It's like, Hey, this works for me. This works for you too. Let's like march on this thing, which is valid. And I think that is actually pushing it forward. Like ketogenic diet, um, for the lack of a better word, like uh, ketogenic metabolic therapy, there whatever it is. No, that's I know, huge I know, term. I know those, but but at the end of the day, those are semantics that are worth discussing. But they are pushing the culture towards a better goal, which or to, towards a better end end result, which is so healthier people. So Brian, can you describe to us a little bit? I mean, again, look at his uh, Instagram and look at this chart. But can you like verbalize the chart about the yeah. sapien framework? We'll say- yeah. Sapien, yeah, yeah. Sapien.org slash diet is where you can find it. But it, it had, I don't think anyone's put this on a, a four quadrant axis where we have the animal foods and protein on one side and the plant foods and fiber on, on the, on the left. And on the top, we have nutrient density and greater health. And the bottom, you have energy density and poor health. So energy density means you're having, whether it be carbs or fat, right? Too you can much have, energy, right? you can have too much energy. If I don't believe in bulletproof coffee. Right? It's like what are you, you're not getting many nutrients. If people are just dumping a whole bunch of oil and butter, right. it's like you're not getting that much from it. Right. It's and still not a healthy diet just because there's no carbs. Yes. Right? Yes. right. It's not that simple. So so the Sabian framework encapsulates this this whole swath across the top right. And so the carnivore diet fits into that. The keto diet fits into Paleo. that. Even pescatarian fits into that. It's like if you want to choose more plant foods, that's fine. Right? As long as you're doing nutrient density and you get those seafoods that have all these great omega-3s and this and yeah. so really then then you can have your sweet spot of like the sapien diet what what i would do is i try to be the most nutrient dense and you know i'm eating like chicken you know hearts and liver and beef liver and oysters and all these different things so but you're not going to shy away from a birthday cake once a month absolutely that is huge too i think that's the key is to is you know like you say moderation it, Everything in moderation, including moderation, like throwing it off kilter. I like taking almost credit a for that, but then Oscar Wilde. Of, of, of course. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that's, <laughs> that's part of your like, a, you know, a philosophy yeah, here. Yeah. And even And that's big coming from a doctor, right? Like someone that's telling you, hey, break the pattern a little bit. Try to test your flexibility. Well, it can, it can keep you more metabolically flexible yeah. by, by throwing it in your system. I do it once a week. It's also about your goals and where you're at. So I'm at my goal weight so I can get away with more things. And then I want to be metabolically flexible so I can mess around on the weekends more than other people maybe. Sure. And everyone's different, right? Like people want to look for this one size fits all solution, right? Or like they want to explain that like if you just eat meat or if you just eat vegetables, it's going to solve all your problems. It's just not true. Like everyone's different and you've got to have a, what, what unified theory you know, of nutrition you, you have to have no. an understanding about no. all foods and, and and our history and our biology and our, uh, our our personal like emotional state like if you recommend to everyone to just eat one food some people are super committed and are going to do that right not that it will be good or bad, but just some people can do that. Other people, if you tell them that, they're going to say, go fuck yourself. Sorry, but that's mm-hmm. what they'll say. And then they're going to go eat a bunch of shit despite you. And for me as a clinician, that sucks right. because I'm trying to intervene on people's lives in a meaningful way. It doesn't mean I can fix everything in five minutes, but if we can get them to not eat carbs five days a week and eat carbs the other two days a week, Okay. Mm-hmm. But if you take this hardcore position of this is the only way you have to eat just this, just like that, you're going to ostracize a bunch it's of people. It's not going to work. And maybe some people are okay with that, having their little niche group of people that they're going to help. I'm going to help my like group of whatever whatever tagline you want to name yeah. yourselves. But that sucks, right? To me, that sucks. It's about being a global community. Like we live in a huge America You know, we talked about Alabama. Look, the people in Alabama are the same as the people in L.A. That They may have some different interests, but we're all in America. We're all on Instagram. We're all on social media. We're all watching the TV. It's all the same. So we need to talk about nutrition and lifestyle in a way that's 
meaningful for everyone. Simple and make it simple. Maybe I should do some of my little shticks. I, I I'm so over these. Give I, us a couple shticks. Okay. Yes. Well, okay, so I, I want. Okay, <laughs> here we go. It's too much. So His brain there, is there's, exploding. There's three ways. <laughs> there's there's basically three ways to lose weight. You can avoid fat. You can avoid carbs, or you can avoid food. There's really no other ways to lose weight, right? So but everyone has their own ideas like, oh, my diet's the best. It's like, okay, well, you're just avoiding food, right? You're just, all you're doing is calorie counting and restricting. Sure. And maybe you're miserable all the time because you're hungry. And, but you're like, oh, well, I can, you know, I'm going to squeeze in this one, you know, I get a Snickers bar once a week or like, you know, <laughs> like. Pleasure centers. They so, just want to tickle the pleasure centers. So Push there's all these diets thing. based around that. Then there's, you can avoid fat. So this is a whole experiment that went wrong for the past 50 years. And, you know, low-fat vegans are still trying to do it. It's not just vegans. It's literally a low-fat diet in America. The Mediterranean yeah. diet, the quote-unquote Mediterranean diet has failed us. Yeah. yeah. And Or you can avoid carbs. So the thing is, they can all work. I'm not denying that, right? I'm, there's many ways to lose weight. You can lose weight on an all-Twinkie diet. That's that's <laughs> documented. A guy did it, right? Yeah. I think he was a doctor even. So, but the, you got to look at the the benefits of each and the downsides of each. So if you're just trying to eat the same foods but just have less – that's not going to work. That's the whole eat less, move more. Never works. People, why do 95, 97% of guys way, yeah. fail? It never works because you're doing the same thing. You're just trying to eat less. That's not sustainable. Right. You're, and you're hungry all the time. So it's, it's, it's food choice matters, right? So then it's if you're going to avoid fat, well, why are you avoiding fat? Because that's a good thing. We know about fat soluble vitamins. We now know that cholesterol isn't bad, that saturated, saturated fat's, fat's not bad. essential. Okay. It's so, essential. Forget so, about bad. It's great. So why, there, there's no point in going that way. That's just going to hurt you in your nutrient density. So the obvious thing is to avoid carbs and carbs usually don't have a big plus side, right? There's, if you're looking at nutrient density, the carbohydrate rich foods don't have good nutrient density. And they also, these carbohydrate rich foods make you hungry sooner. There's studies showing about these satiety studies and how your blood sugar, you don't want to go on this roller coaster of blood sugar. And, you know, how, that's why people eat six meals a day because they're like, oh, I need food. It's like my blood right. sugar. The, the, the frequency of meals is a response to the lack of nutrient density in the food. Yes. Right. And the comparison to fat, it keeps you less satiated, right? And also, no, more, it's more satiated. So you're not just constantly trying to eat. But well, if you're having yeah. more carbs, then you're, you're less satiated. You're less yes, satiated. Exactly. You're going to want to have another meal. That's the whole yes. joke about the Chinese dinner, and then you're hungry a couple hours later. Exactly. Because so, you just ate a bunch of rice. So, and bread and chicken. <laughs> and noodles. So and dark also, meat or white meat chicken that has nothing in it. Okay. So here's another thing. People always say, oh, well, like in a metabolic ward study, if you equate for protein and fat, it doesn't matter if you eat carbs or fat. It's all the same. Like, okay, well, no one knows how hungry these people are, how miserable they are, right? I don't care what you you look at in some study that says one thing. We know that carbs make you go on this blood sugar roller coaster. We know they're not as nutrient dense. We know that you're going to get hungrier later. So it's very easy to know which direction we should go. And that's – it's also – Perfectly aligns with an ancestral diet. Ancestral diet. Right? So if you're diet. looking, so we can look at all this, this stuff good. in a this modern good, science, and then and then you look at the big picture. It's like, oh wait, so our ancestors were eating protein and fat, right? right. And right. then so and and it also everything lines up. That's kind of like the film, Food Life film. Like, exactly. We're gonna look at everything, and then it all lines up. There's no holes. I don't. I have a big problem with vegans because they don't look at these giant gaping holes in their ideas. Right, they're they're putting their head in the sand and not right. If they're if they're you know preaching on the environmental, they're missing a very big part of that of that the, story. That cows can help the soil. Exactly. They're preaching about nutrition. They don't know about nutrient density, and they don't know the healthy sure. side of fats. And they're using fifty year old. Well, trouble science. trouble with veganism is it's also rooted in a religious ideology. Uh, not all. Everybody, everybody's got a different well, the root reason. Of it, sure. The root of veganism. The, cru- so, the animal cruelty. So that no, 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 no. The root of veganism is the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Okay, so what? And at the end of the day, and they they thought that meat, especially red meat, increases sex drive and makes people masturbate. This is and it's a makes great violent. There's but a great, modern day veganism is not necessarily. But that's based where it's that. rooted, right? Okay, sure. so so those people don't even realize that their ideas are that are flimsy science and flimsy ideas are rooted in a religious ideology that had nothing to do with science. That had to do with just mm-hmm. some ideas about 
sh- meet making people masturbate. And this sounds crazy, but you could violent. read all this. You yeah. could read all this. You're right, this. but it, it seems real. to me that the majority of opinions today in veganism is about animal cruelty. Because of some yes. really good documentaries on Netflix, yeah. right? Also because, no, there some has been there has been a, a terrible treatment in our in, yeah. in our animal in, in a I think that's mostly industry. in third world countries, too. I like, know. Really? So there, Exactly. So there's a lot of, like... Picking and choosing, like cherry picking of, of uh, you know, videos to, you get to one like, bad video push. and it's in like some crazy like third world country and then they spread it all over everything. Yeah. But that's enough to tug on people's emotions and make it them is. change their entire life. It goes back to the point that we made earlier about storytelling. It's like the brain wants to fill in a beginning, middle, and end. If you get a beginning, you need a, you, your brain is yearning for, to or be if you don't know the beginning, then you don't know that the end is bullshit. <laughs> Because right, yeah. if you don't know the start of the story, well, back to well, then you're the, confused. They don't know the beginning. Part of the, the <laughs> which big is whole, the majority of Americans are confused. Well, the big hole in veganism and is they doctors. don't they don't look at the beginning of the story. Is that our ancestors spent millions of years eating, and we became human because we ate meat. They actually are really confused about the story because they say, "Oh, we came from chimpanzees," so right. they assume that our bodies are still like chimpanzees, and which is not evolutionary consistent because it's not how evolution worked. And we know that. And if you don't believe in evolution, then I'm not sure why you're listening to this podcast. Anyway, so <laughs> bye, guys. But yeah. for those of you that aren't into that. We'll go over to that piece of the film, too. But it's really interesting because if you don't study it, you could just hear some vegans saying, oh, well, we were, you know, we were chimps. Oh, yeah, the vegan said, story makes a lot of sense. That's what I'm if, saying. If you're like, it's a good if story. If you're an alien it. race. So yeah. I, I would love to bring up the alien race Do LDL it. Uh, Do it. analogy. Love it. I love it. Okay, so but it's better coming from someone who actually knows what they're talking about in regards to LDL. So... Um, explain it. Then the the animal. Well, you get, give me. Okay, I, I like I like the way you describe stories in layman because I think I okay. can get so bogged yeah. down in my like science bullshit. That so I to be completely know. just frank, like HDL and LDL, I understand their roles, but I'm not like scientific enough to understand their specific um, definitions. Even so, what I understand is that if. If um, if you were an animal race looking at the human race from from an outside perspective, and you were to just observe, yeah. hu- you're looking at the human race, and you were just to observe their their human activity from a spaceship, from flying. A spaceship flying around the uh, Earth, you would notice that every time that there's some sort of harm done or some sort of injury done, that ambulances arrive. An ambulance arrives to this to the scene of injury and then whisks them away. And so maybe you would be generalizing enough to say it looks like every time you know that that the ambulances are responsible for the harm. Just just from an outside perspective of the activity, you would think ambulances have something to do with human health, like negatively, de- detrimental, yeah, yeah. detrimental to human health. Obviously, that is that is a, a you so know, an illusion. What Yaniv is saying is that that's how we understood LDL particles in the formation of clots in the heart. There you go. Up until now, understanding we, it, we would go into a clot in the heart, we would see the LDL particle and be like, oh. This must have caused the blockage. Let's drop the LDL and that'll solve the problem. Just like the alien race would look down and say, oh, those ambulances are causing the problem. We're going to zap and kill all the ambulances. Doesn't solve the problem. And that's been now for God knows how long with these statins. They're not doing anything. We know they're not doing anything. We we know they're not doing anything so much that the dosing guidelines for statins about a few years ago changed. We don't even look at LDL to to dictate the dose. So should it be a marker or not? LDL is relevant. LDL is almost irrelevant now to, to doctors that understand uh, cholesterol and lipidology, even a little bit. They know that LDL is not this horrifying marker anymore. Well, there's way more context to it though. It's, you got to look at the HDL and the triglycerides well, and saying. the ratios. and It still can be bad though. If you're eating a mixed diet, if you're eating the standard American diet of trash and you have high LDL, then it probably is a problem. The, the idea, though, is that the LDL is not causing the problem. Yes. The LDL is just there. In fact, we think a lot of these cholesterol particles are anti-inflammation. Right. They're trying to bandage a wound. Uh, another similar analogy that I believe Nina used in her book was uh, like blaming the firefighters for 9-11. Like right. if you just showed up to the ruins of 9-11 and you saw these dead firefighters laying there, you're like, they must have been involved. They must have caused this. Mm. No, no, no. They were trying to help. They just got caught up in the in the fray. LDL's been framed. <laughs> so, okay, so many of our problems with health is from oversimplification, oversimplification. and not understanding yes. it. And some of it is 
it's not our fault. It's like we didn't have all the instruments to do the science when we started making this stuff up 50 years ago and making these conclusions. And we rushed to some conclusions. We needed to give dietary advice to the country and we didn't know if it was fat or carbs were the problem. And, you know, we had Ansel Key do the whole thing with that. It's like he made a compelling case. He did. He was good. But Ansel Keys, you guys, look up the story about Ansel Keys <laughs> and the the fat heart hypo fat heart diet hi- heart hi- hypothesis diet heart hypothesis and, and what happened in the 1950s and 60s that led to our current perspective on fat. Again, not saying that he was malicious in that, right? No, no. but misinformed. So yeah, just so many problems. Vegans, it's always over oversimplification, and then if you look deeper, it doesn't pan out. So you look. But at what's happening now is with the carnivore movement. Now they're oversimplifying it. Yeah, they're over keto, just like keto fad diet, oversimplifying. They're You're using talking- they're using little pieces of the tired nutrient food theory. And and anchoring on that because it's very marketable. It's marketable. Okay, the moment you, you get give, a lot of social media followers. Well, of course, right. the moment you give something a label and build a community around it, you can create product. You can really grow commerce, and we mm. see it every that, and even with content, right? So, like, if I'm the keto guy, I'm going to write a keto book, and I'm going to make a keto channel, and I'm going to be. I'm going to people know who you are. They get it. It's like it's easy to understand, and they go to you. And part of the story, your brain is just trying, kind of like filling in the, the missing Which gaps. is why I think we decided to make a name for our diet, which is the Sapien Diet, because at least then we have like a word to describe what so we're talking about. So we're doing about. the same thing, but it's clearly, I think it's important to state that the, that the very essence of Sapien as a diet is flexibility, yes. is, is, is being and adjacent. And it's just human. It's just being and cons- And taking into consideration, and this is something that I think was echoed in both of your guys' comments right now, is taking into consideration the emotional and spiritual state of the person there you go. and trying to understand that everyone is different and having flexibility in your recommendations, flexibility in your day-to-day yeah. habits is key to actually helping more people. Mm-hmm. It's not about helping a few people. It's about helping America as a whole. Mm. And you can only do that if you take into account the overwhelming prevalence of depression that's being completely untreated in this country because we have no good tools anymore. Yeah. Nor did we ever, I guess. <clears throat> you know, taking into account a history of carb dependence, a history of food culture, whether it's American or Israeli or Russian food. You know what I mean? Emotional eating. Emotional eating. eating. So much of it's from the the background. Dr. Trill mentioned, he's like, two thirds of my patients have prior problems, like psychological problems, emotional problems that come to him for obesity, right? Right. It's a way higher than normal kind of thing. This is... This is a good time. Uh, we were gonna, we're running out of time a little bit, but we we're gonna talk about, we're gonna try to talk about some relevant news articles every. We episode. covered a lot of the main topics we without head, hitting on headlines. But I, because we keep, you know, we keep talking about food, but we also, I think, uniquely bring this approach of like mood, spirit, emotion to it. And so, just uh, this week, uh, JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, uh, came out with an article talking about it's like a. I think it's a review or it's an editorial. You guys can look it up, but it's it's new approaches to treatment of depression. Yeah. And so, what are those new new one yes. exercise? Mm-hmm. Two nutrition. What dietary changes? Mm-hmm. And three was ketamine, mm-hmm. which is a new which is a new old drug that we're starting to figure out how to use to treat mood <laughs> disorder. But the the point here is that. We as a society know we're struggling with psychiatric disease. We have sad, sad people killing other people with guns because they are not getting care and they have access to these weapons, but whatever. We have uh, hundreds of millions of people with depression on antidepressants that don't do anything. And we know they don't don't do anything meaningful anyway. Mm-hmm. And and we we are completely deplete of like a real therapy psychotherapy system like we've left that behind in the 1960s and we've replaced it with video games and and tv shows you know and pills pills and stuff but the pills don't work right so that's why you have three things you have move like move so that your natural endorphins release and you feel better they you could look at the article they did all this great research multiple like Confound right. blinded studies. It's like you don't need blinded studies to know that movement's going to help depression. <laughs> we in America need it, I guess, to prove to people that need studies. But okay, then they did 
they did a whole, like there's four or five uh, article or studies that they referred to about, you know, any dietary intervention. Yeah. And it kind of gets to what Brian's saying is our food system is so shitty that almost like any change will help, right? It's also focusing on something. If you're, what what's, you know, what you focus on is changes. Right. Like well, I'm not using on. like sugar to feel better, but hey, yeah. I'm going to eat this healthy food and it's going to make me feel better and that process. And then the third is the fact that we know that these daily suppressive sedating medicines like SSRIs and benzos, they don't work. No. And they make people, they make complications and they make people have all sorts of other problems. And so now we're looking at drugs like ketamine. Uh, Johnson & Johnson recently re- re- got a FDA approved Spravato, which is a the S enantiomer of ketamine. And, and uh, that's a nasal spray that you, you, you do the spray in the office. Uh, it, you know, it, it gives you some cognitive effects, but what it does is it gives you weeks of benefit from a suicidal ideation standpoint and from a depression standpoint. And these, these, uh, huge. you know, it's huge because you don't need to take it every day. You don't have all these de- deleterious, uh, you know, side effects like decreased libido and, and, you know, your mood, moods get variable. And yeah, obesity. it's going to be controversial just cut, stemming from being a street drug and it's going right. to have all this like, you know negative connotation from where it stood before but i think and obviously it's something that that pharmaceuticals would jump on right yeah. big pharma and look would they're gonna do more research but there's tons of research there's research from the 90s there's research from the 50s and 60s they were using this stuff in conjunction with psychotherapy which is essentially a fancy word for therapy talking yeah. to someone about your problems you you use these psychotropic drugs in in treatment controlled treatment environments and you can get profound effects. Yeah. They have there. There's some studies. Now their end values are pretty low, like 50, 60, 70. But but the p values are good, and they're getting like 60 percent reduction in symptoms. Like really profound mm. stuff that antidepressants, traditional drugs can't even touch. They've never even come close to those kind of benefits. And then when you look at the history, you've got tribes using things like peyote and mescaline. You've got uh, you know, places in the, in the South uh, America where they're using things like ayahuasca that's becoming more popular. These are traditional uh, cultural ancestral uses from of psychedelic one. drugs in co- done thoughtfully right. with, well, with supervision. With with a healing ceremony. environment, ceremonial. This isn't for fun. This isn't to get high and suppress your right. feelings. This is to feel the feelings. It's also like a rite of passage yeah. ceremony. I love that. I mean, I, I love I've that. read about like people would travel all over the world back in way ancient times to different cities and and do these rite of passage ceremonies. And they I did that, that to treat themselves, treat their emotions, treat their confusion, get answers, and we don't do that anymore. We well, just as a culture, suppress we, and sedate. We, as a culture, oh, we've separated it mm-hmm. and we added religion to it, which really made it kind of like an organization. Yeah, you but do like this religion, by the book. Religion did a lot of good things. Historically, religion, you know, the, you know uh, my psilocybin is rooted in religion, uh, ayahuasca. So it's, it, religion is not the problem here. It's, it's how we use the drugs and how we interpret medicine in America. We... we we think statins are great, but we don't acknowledge that sugar is the most highly abused drug in the country. And it's, what we do we is... We don't admit that it's a drug. That's, we don't admit that it's a... That's what I'm saying. That's, it's almost like foreign to hear it like that, you know? Yeah. But that's what, like part of changing your mind. is like understanding what what is what and looking at a drug like it's a food or vice yeah. versa is part Realizing of Realizing that, that when you go to Starbucks and you buy the super creamy, frothy, all the sugar shit, it's not the caffeine, it's the overwhelming (laughs) amount of sugar that makes you feel good. Yeah. And it makes you addicted. Well, you're just getting a like boost a boost from the caffeine too. Yeah, it's but I'm double, saying it makes yeah. you addicted. Like the so, sugar makes you like, it's like cocaine. I, I well, always attribute it to cocaine. P- it, people, it, it is. I'm working on a graphic for the film and for yes. social media about this and comparing. It's like, what are all these side effects and symptoms of a drug? Similar. And, and then it's sugar and then protein and fat. And it's, 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 it all lines up for sugar with drugs and it, none of it lines up with and, sugar. And the pushing of the dopamine the dopamine system in your brain that causes addiction and there's studies right there you could probably find yeah, it yeah. it's like pushes the exact same pathways in your brain sugar cocaine cocaine's bad sugar let, let's go eat cereal for breakfast and <laughs> an orange juice and then have a snack it's it's insane what we're doing you guys come on so cliff notes replace carbs with fat and opiates with psychedelics thoughtfully 
Yeah, and psychotherapy. Yeah. And, and look, and look, and realize that everyone is an N of one. That you can do a million double-blind placebo control studies on everything. Everyone's different. And if we're in a fantasy world where we think we're going to come up with one sentence that's going to help everyone, that's a, that's a fucking fantasy. Mm -hmm. You need trained physicians, trained coaches, trained healthcare providers that can give individualized therapy. And that's what I try to do here at Evolve. And, and I'm dead serious about that. That is the most important thing is to be individualized. I, I love the way you boil it down. And just to play devil's advocate, it's like all that sounds amazing, but who has access to that? How much does that cost? Am I really the, the guy who's in, you know... Well, apparently Obama made it so that everyone has health care now, right? Not really. That's not... I the, mean, no, I know. Not, I'm I making know. a joke. I'm like... Well, well, the practicality of what you're <laughs> saying isn't like that accessible. It's not, it's not like everybody has the ability to, uh, forget just getting health insurance, have access to private care but like yourself. Look, there's doctors. Look, I am taking new patients in my office in Woodland Hills right now. I have slots tomorrow. And how... Or, uh, uh, Tuesday. I have slots Tuesday. So well, how so, unique is your clinic and you and we're in LA? Like that's just to contextualize First of all, it. they're out there. There's doctors out there. It's starting. There's it's, a movement. People don't want to go to doctors. Right. People have well, a distrust of Western medicine. Reasonably so, but yeah. but okay. we need to bridge that gap. Well, we can do that. Anyone can find out enough information online. It's just hard to weed through it all. Right. But I mean Maybe we should do a little plug for Sapien here. I don't know if that's what you're trying that's to do. That's really what I'm getting but at because you can get this message for free. You can get this information oh, for shit. free. I see your Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Not, not only that. No, yeah. we were talking about this food renaissance, right? We're talking about the psychedelics renaissance. And now, truly, it's medical care renaissance. There's, there's a need for a different type of health care. And sure, you're doing it at Evolve, but I think on a bigger scale, what we're trying to do with Sapien is educate I see your point. and Great. give people the tools to actually apply it in their well, lives. You don't even have to see us. Yeah, you can just t listen to all the Peak Human podcasts. You can watch the Food Lights film when it comes out. And, and you just can, go on the website. You're right. And go on the website right. and you can figure all this out. Maybe it's not as easy and you're not going to have that personalized attention and you're not going to be – maybe it's not as easy to stick to and you know, part of our technology we're building is compliance. Yeah, and I like all it. This. I like but yes, that. you can do it for free and – if you can figure out the right sources. To, I think that's what we're doing. struggle with is like who to trust. Right. Yeah. Right. We're sitting here spewing a lot of new. Yeah, who says you, who, and it's like, why should well, I listen I trust to you guys? Us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I would say it's proven. I'm over. a highly trained physician. <laughs> Brian's board a, certified. Let's just throw board it certified. Uh, but no, I mean like it, so are other doctors that are propagating veganism. So who knows that's the problem. who to trust. The, the reality is, if you literally look at the information out there and you really spend the time, we've been we've been lied to. Going back to food lies, Brian came up with the with the title, and and I think that it is just spot on. And it's not the only thing we've been lied to, right? There's there's a world of, where we can make a movie drug called drug lies. lies. There's there's your name. Uh, there can, he is. I cancer love it. lies. Fire Are you up. kidding me? Like when we Ooh. filmed at the Metabolic Health Summit, and I learned that cancer is likely a metabolic disease and yeah. and that, that blew my mind are you kidding me like i, I know i know that this you guys are in, in that in that space much more than i am and so you this is not even surprising to you but to me that blew my mind to stand there to normal people but look i've never in my whole medical training no one had ever suggested using a ketogenic metabolic therapy for any malignancy I was on the hemonc wards at Indiana University for months and months and months. And at no point did someone say, maybe you should stop sucking on that glucerna and replace it with some healthy bone broth. Onc it means oncology. Oncology. Hematology, oncology wards is where all the cancer patients are. My point is, is they're serving them pure sugar. Pure sugar. And they're like, oh, it's high protein. So what? It's probably not even high protein. And even really. from a rudimentary it's level, not, no. <laughs> you can see um, the past 60 years of disease looking at like Alzheimer's and diabetes being re relatively new diseases. Yeah, especially the prevalence of them, yeah. And then boom, you look, especially in America, right? And then you look at the, the, the epidemic of sugar and you can you could probably draw a correlation, which is not causation. I, since we talked about your alien theory, right. I want to talk about it as it relates to Alzheimer's disease because I think this is really exciting new research that a lot of people get excited about. Okay. One of the newest theories is that Alzheimer's disease is actually type 3 diabetes. And we, when I was in medical school and training, there's these beta amyloid plaques that we would find posthumously. You know, we, the person would die. We'd look in their brain. We'd see these beta amyloid plaques. And I was trained 
these plaques are causing Alzheimer's disease. Right, yeah. And again, so simplistic. And what we're finding out is that these plaques are actually our brain trying to protect itself from a metabolic sugar dysregulation process and that we're going in and we're blaming the firefighters for trying to fight the fire when go. the reality is you're eating a bunch of poison. Right. That's did, incredible. I Woo! just did a podcast with Dr. Dale Bredesen, who we saw the Metabolic Health Summit. So End I, of Alzheimer's. So I didn't book. tell you guys, I just did that the other day. By the time this airs, it will be live on Peak Human. Awesome. It'll, it's amazing. He breaks it all down. I mean, he just wrote the book End of Alzheimer's and has yeah. incredible insight into like the He's, actual application. He of wrote the book and yet most people have no idea. Most doctors have I had no to, idea no. That, no. Readable. that it's a metabolic disease. Yeah. yeah. They just think so, there's no more. And also, just to throw this in, it's not 100% metabolic. Well, of course. Too. He talks about there's like three different types and there's like six types, but it's like it could be caused by inflammation. But yes, mostly a lot. Well, at least like just, toxicity. I, I'm acknowledging that there is a component of No, it's huge. No, no, it's, it's huge. huge. Yeah. It's just there's also some, you know, like mold or like there's different like things that contribute to it as well. And they, they, so we're reaching the one hour point. Let's go ahead and just plug away at some of the like, our, our assets, our entities. Our, so our, our most our, exciting our new asset. Brian Sanders, <laughs> dominating the game, nose to tail.org. Absolutely, man. Congratulations, Congratulations on the launch. Brian. I Thank know you, you brought that out this week, and it's like very sneakily, quietly working on it. But man, it is impressive to see you taking the bull by the horn, so to speak. Like you're li literally like helping people uh, get access to organ meat, get getting a uh, well sourced meat into. into Brian their homes. is connecting farmers that are doing it right with consumers that want that healthy meat yeah, and providing products that are not just muscle meat, but that include all the most nutritious parts of the animal. That's hence nose and, and tail. Personally curating it. So it's not literally just picking a, a crop and a cow and sending it to that buyer. Yeah. It's like you're actually picking we're the, the best. boxes. Yeah. And yeah, we're developing new products. Like our ground beef product has kidney, spleen, liver and heart in it I love so it. then you don't a lot of people have a problem mm. with the taste the stuff that everybody throws away right yeah but this is mixed in and you don't really taste it i mean we have two versions the light if you can't handle it and, and, the, <laughs> and the regular so yes yes I, I'm, I'm really happy with it and it was one of my dreams always for sapien i had this dream a year ago and i and i can't believe it's all actually happening yeah, a year yeah. later well, you we made it happen brother the farming so the sapien there there's three big pillars of sapien it was the education side which is Food Lies, Peak Human, this show, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. We're getting the education. Then there's the health technology part, right? That's where Gary comes in. We have the app. We're building this technology to help doctors, patients, and health coaches Huge. connect, Huge. track everything. We Then we have the big farming and food. That's a whole other sector that I thought we were going to take five years to get yeah. into, but then it, it, it all lined up. I finally found the right farmer to start working with. And I love it. And I want to bring, I want to bring these products into the inpatient center. That's, that's where I want to help is th th there's patients in these hospitals withering away their, you know, protein levels are in the t tank and they're just feeding them bread and glucerna. And I want to bring real nutritious food to hospitals and rehab centers and nursing homes, people that are, Malnutrition should be eating real food. They have the biggest risk, and we're giving them the worst food. The These worst are the people food. are the most vulnerable, the older people, the sick people, and we're giving them people with wounds, me. with wounds that they can't heal, and you're feeling them sugar to feed the bacteria. People like, DM what? me these photos of cafeteria meals from the hospital. Well, the I time. just learned also about this protein or the smoothie that that Lita, our friend, has has been prescribing. Right, like that's part of She's their a doctor. part of their care. Yeah, so Doctor she, Lita Fatemi, awesome doctor in New Mexico, well decorated doctor, well decorated in physician, and so she well, part of their mm -hmm. care is to. Is to provide them with smoothies, right? Is, do you know anything about that? Yeah, she's trying to. She's just trying to provide a more nutritious uh, products for her patients. And I'm actually working with her and Brian, and we're going to try to connect with the University of New Mexico's, uh, you know, wound care team and try to bring them our enriched bone broth product to go. actually help people with their nutrition deficiencies when they need it the most when they're healing their wounds. So that's hopefully in the next couple, you know, months to year. Uh, hopefully that's something that we'll we'll start launching. Exactly. So really, we're just trying to bring valuable products, whole food products. I don't want to get into a bunch of supplements. I don't want to get into a bunch of you know scam. That's just trying to make money, jump on a bandwagon, do right. like keto products. No, we're doing real we're doing real food. things. We're doing technology that helps people. Shit, we didn't we're even talk about how important salt is. But anyway, oh my God, we'll yeah. talk about it in another podcast. Yeah, yeah. Future yeah. episodes, but. 
Mainly, yeah, the last piece was the farming and the food and bringing people. So proud of yes. you, Brian. It's such yeah, a congratulations. It's a huge Wait, launch. So we got, got nose to tail.org. Yeah. We've got sapien.org. Sapien.org, which is which is clearly our sort of like the, where, hub. the hub of everything where you can find information about all the sh- all the content. Um, food lies. Lies. And food lies being the primary Not project. Org. Org. So foodlies.org is our is a, a hub to, to learn about the film that's currently in post production. Uh, we're proud to be putting it out, obviously. So and, exciting. Um, check out foodlies.org for the trailer, but you can learn through his Instagram at food.lies where there's a lot of those graphs we mentioned. And um, and if you guys want to start working on this stuff, I'm here. I'm taking new patients. <laughs> EvolveHealthcare.com. In Los Angeles, that is, for now. For now. We're working. We're, we're, I, think, I think in the next year we'll have an ability to pr- deliver our Sapien Diet Program through uh, either my EHR or our proprietary app. I think we are months away from that. Yeah. And I love, and I'm learning a lot more why you would hate the word diet. I, I'm starting to really, like, really hate that word as well. As I, yeah. it, I think it helps conclude all this because it truly is a framework and um, a lifestyle, lifestyle. A li- framework or lifestyle or both. It's a way yeah. of living. It's a yeah, way of it, eating. It's, it's a, a way of being healthy and not being chronically ill. And the diet mentality has always been the quick fix, and we understand now with this with this approach that it's it's not a quick fix. It's something that you need to commit to over a life period. It's something that you need to need to look at as a lifestyle change. And so, dude, thank you guys for uh, for thank leading you. the ways. Let's fire it up right it. now. Ah. Let's go eat some meat, you guys. Let's do it. Let's go get some barbecue. And some I'm not dead kidding. presses in between each bite. Oh, Let's go, brother. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks yeah. for the ra- uh, yeah observing the rambles um, <laughs> and yeah. tune in. I'm sure we're going to be putting yeah, more of these. Yeah, give us feedback too and let us know what kind of guests you want. We're going to do a lot of in-person stuff. So we you know we have people coming through town. We have Paul Saladina coming through town. We got you know some local guys. We're I got a co- um, couple of my doctor friends that are sort of in this world, uh, neurologist, neurointerventionalist. I've got a really great uh, nephrologist that wants to chime in and help us out. Yeah. So. We'll be bringing a lot of uh, kind of clinical, practical people in to kind of give us their perspectives. And keep the conversation going, guys. This is obviously something that's timely and it's of our generation's responsibility to move the conversation forward. On that note, thank you. And we're out. All right. That's a wrap. Thanks for subscribing on iTunes and YouTube. Thanks for giving us a review. Check out the meet at nosetail.org. Check out the film at foodlies.org. Check out everything at sapien.org. Come be a health coach. Come work with us if you're a doctor. Sapien.org. Submit any questions you have on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Just search for Food Lies. And hopefully we can get to it on the show with Dr. Gary. All right. See you next time.